Okay, well, we have had several requests to do a video on the helmet cover, which is a product from my product and design company called uh, Orion Design Group or ODG USA. You can check it out, odgusa.co, not .com. Everybody kind of makes that mistake, but it's actually odgusa.co. So you can swing over there, check it out. This is a product that I, this is actually my flagship product and it's a product that I designed in 2010 after my last deployment to Afghanistan working with a USASOC task force. Uh, we got a chance to, I got a chance to work with those guys, be embedded with them and look at how they were doing things with their gear close up. And the trend at the time was a lot of shoe goo, a lot of adhesive loop. They were putting adhesive loop all over everything which is the sticky sided loop that you can just buy at the hardware store. And they were using all of that to route cables and then they were spray painting everything. And it was just arts and crafts time in the team room. And I just thought that there was a better way to do it than to uh, spend that much time routing cable, putting loop on everything. And then if you, wanted to ch if you wanted to change something out real quick, it was like a big process. You had to like pretty much rip everything apart and redo everything on your helmet. And there was a lot of mission essential gear that they were using helmet cameras with cables and power systems. And then they were using um, night vision with power packs, powering their night vision goggles. There's just a lot of things going on. So I thought, why not design a helmet cover that has all of the capability in it to carry all of their mission essential stuff uh, so that you don't have to spend a lot of time in the team room on arts and crafts, which is good. It's field craft. It's it's a fun, fun thing to do to pass time sometimes in the team room to mess with your gear and modify it and do all that. But wanted to ha design something that was a little bit more user-friendly and that you could just slap on your helmet, put all your end-user user mission essential gear on there, and it would keep it secure and carry it effectively on your helmet. So we came up with this. I was the first person to come up with a hybridized two, two different types of material. This mesh, which does really good for IR reflectivity and breakup, and then a 520E tweave fabric, which is printed, that allows you to get good fitment on the helmet. Like if you can see, this is pulled nice and snug on the helmet. I don't know. Sometimes I've seen people wearing helmet covers. There's, it, it looks like they're wearing a chef hat on their, on their helmet and there's just a lot of slop and fabric. And it just, it doesn't, it doesn't look good and it, it just looks like shit. So that said, I wanted to come up with two different materials so that you could get a really good fit on the helmet, but then you could still get some really good visual and IR breakup. And that's where this mesh material comes into play. At the time that I designed this, I think Cry Precision and Opscore both had a helmet cover that they had designed, but it was all mesh. And then they were using 550 uh, paracord and tacking that down, which is fine. It's super durable, but when then when it comes to routing gear underneath it, it's it's not fun. You have to get a set of needle nose pliers sometimes to like push cables and larger items underneath where they tack the 550 cord. So I went with a flat elastic, which does the job just fine. This helmet cover is one of the first prototypes. Like the original prototype was made by First Spear for me. And then uh, this, this is, I believe the second prototype and I actually sewed this one together myself because I took one of my older first beer ones and cut it apart and then patterned it out and then when I had my this fabric printed which is a camouflage pattern that I designed once again if you want to check that out it's a pattern called variable xt go to odgusa.co and if you scroll far enough down the page you'll see all of the camouflage patterns that I designed back in 2012 I think is when those came out but anyway we get a lot of questions about how to properly install the helmet cover on the helmet. So we will go ahead and go through that right now. To install the helmet, the first thing you're gonna do is take your helmet, obviously, if you got another cover on there, or you have you know a bunch of your gear on there, you had your strobe on there or whatever, make sure you pull off all of your gear. For this video, I'm not gonna pull off my max mount because there's really no need to. And I'm not gonna pull off my boogie goggles because there's no need to. Uh, to install the helmet, but if you've got a bunch of other gear on your helmet, strip it all off so that it's just the helmet. Next thing you're going to do, the only thing you need for this is a flathead screwdriver. And so what you're going to do is you're going to, if your bungee, if your bungees are hooked up, you know, because I usually run mine and they're hooked on here, usually right there, I, I unhook them. Get them out of the way. 
So then and you're going to need to do that to put the helmet cover on. So you take the flathead screwdriver and really all you need to do is you just need to loosen up your front chin strap bolts. You don't need to take them all the way out. You just need to loosen them. So you're just going to loosen those guys up just a hair. About that much. When you can see the, there's some play in the bolt there, you're good. So you're going to do that on the other side. Just loosen it up a little bit. Turn. Okay, and the reason you're going to loosen those bolts up is because those bolts are holding in your front chin strap mounts, but they're also holding in this front foam liner, at least on this particular model. This is an older uh, carbon bump shell version, but the, uh, the interior of the helmets is usually pretty, it's pretty much the same across the board. Opscore has your ballistic shell, then they have a foam impact liner on here, and then they have your, your pad liner system for wear, for the end user to wear for comfort. They have this like nice little sweat band in there that uh, helps hold in your suspension system and all that. So realistically, what you just need to do is you need to loosen these bolts enough to get uh, a little bit of play in between the shell and the foam liner. See how I can like pull this away now? You might have to use this if your foam liner is like heavily Velcroed in and you've loosened up your chin strap bolts and this thing is still like super solid and right up against there, you might need to just put it in there and just lightly, very lightly, because you don't want to break that foam, but you want to just lightly pry just a little bit. You can see you can hear the Velcro coming apart a little bit there and that'll give you enough gap to then take the helmet cover, this guy right here. We always get questions. People are like, what are the... What are the front plastic pieces for? And how do, I, how do I attach these to the helmet? Because they're thinking that it needs to be Velcro to go up inside the helmet and Velcro to the tabs like the, the rear of the cover does. And in fact, that's not the case. These are pressure tension fit to go in between the, uh, the shell and the foam liner. So essentially you're just gonna take your plastic tab here and you're going to stick it in between the hard foam and the shell of the helmet. And then you're just gonna push that guy back so that it's close to the edge of where your foam ends or it's close to the bolt, okay? And that'll give you, that'll spread it out enough so that when you stretch it over the helmet, it'll clear your night vision, uh, your nod mount. I'm just gonna stick that tab in there all the way down, okay? You should always have it so that it's not, the plastic's not sticking out at all. The plastic should be completely down in between the foam and the exterior ballistic shell. And you're just gonna push that back Okay, and then once you get that inserted, you're gonna go ahead and get your handy dandy screwdriver and just re-tighten your chin strap bolt step back down. Okay, get them good and snug. There we go, now they're nice and snug, not going anywhere. Okay, so then once that's done, you've got those plastic tabs up inside the helmet, then you're just gonna to wanna to pull the cover up and over the nod mount. And then you're gonna see where the hook on the cover is sewn so that it should match up perfectly with the loop adhesive loop on the helmet. So if you have a situation where it's a little bit short, just make sure you pull it as tight as you can so you get a good snug fit. So you just wanna match those up as good as possible over here to this other side. You're gonna pull, and get it nice and snug and get it matched up. All right, then you're gonna check to make sure that it cleared your nod mount, okay? And as long as it's not, as long as the cover's not occluding anything in this space right here, you should be just fine, okay? If it, if it overlaps this top bolt or these side bolts a little bit, that's fine because that's not gonna interfere with your mounting of your night vision gear. So just make sure that there's no material that's overlapping in this space. Kind of self-explanatory, but you'd be surprised the questions we get in the customer service email sometimes about things that we think are relatively self-explanatory. All right, so then you're just gonna pull that so it's nice and snug, it's nice and tight, okay? And then you're just gonna continue to pull that down to the back of the helmet, just like that. Make sure your hook and your loop match up on the back of the helmet, nice and snug. Just like that. Make sure your straps aren't all tangled up. See how that strap is tangled up? Make sure your straps are clear. Okay. Your rear straps. All right. So now that that's now that's done, that's that's essentially how the cover should fit. Now to check for fitment, you want to also make sure that you've got an eighth to a quarter inch gap above the rails. 
we don't want a lot of crazy overlap on your rail. If you got a lot of material that's like, you know, overlapping on your rail, that's a bad cut. If you've got like, see how there's a little bit of gap right here, that's acceptable. But if you've got more than that, and you've got like, it's, it looks like that, then that's a bad cover and you need to send that. That's a bad fit. And that was probably a helmet cover that shouldn't have passed QA. So that's our standard. Eighth to a quarter inch above the rail going back once in a while. I probably just need to pull this a little bit tighter. You get a situation where the cut is a little bit high on the rail on the back. You usually just need to pull, straighten it out and pull. Make sure, yeah, it's a little bit better. Okay, so yeah, so it should fit just like that. Okay, it shouldn't exceed the rim of the helmet. Okay, the back here, you shouldn't have a lot of material coming down past your the uh, ballistic edge of your helmet shell right there. And then you want to take these straps. A lot of questions and confusion too on where these straps go. And I've seen people just like fold them up on their helmet like that. That's incorrect. That's not properly installed. So you want to take these guys, right? And you'll see, you're gonna tuck them down between your nape strap or your awk pad and the suspension system, just like that. And then you're gonna find in here the hook and you're just gonna Velcro it down to the hook, just like that. Make sure they're pulled nice and snug. And then you're going to take your pad and replace it right over the top of them. Just like that. That's a properly installed helmet cover. Just like that. Then once that's done, you can replace all of your Mission Essential gear. Got your IFF on the top right here. You've got your strobe. We run Mantis strobe. I'm a pretty huge fan of SNS gears. You guys can see. I love their Max Mount and their Mana Strobe. I've been using these for years. My my friends over, all my friends over at SNS Precision, uh, owned by two uh, SEALs that were former Special Mission Unit guys. Really great dudes, Drew and Johnny. Fantastic humans. Some of my favorite people in the industry. They they run a whole great company. Have a whole crew of great people over there. Stephanie, Will, and the design team. Everybody that's over there is uh, really top top tier human beings. So. Swing over there. I'll put links if you guys are interested in the um, the Max Mount or the Mana Strobe. We'll go ahead and put those in. Uh, one of the one of the exclusive features of our helmet cover, and we were one of the, I'm pretty sure we were the first person to do this as well. We were the first people to put a strobe bungee to tie down your strobe, and this will work with a Manta. I mean, obviously, I designed it with a Manta in mind because I used it, and my customers that at the time were, that's all pretty much all they used was a Manta strobe. But it works with the Hellstar. It works with a even in a, one of the bigger old school MS two thousand strobes. You can you can get it to work on there as well if you use a little bit. You might have to use a little bit of extra duct tape or zip tie to keep the bungee from sliding around on that thing because it's about that big. But we you can definitely get it to work and it'll tie your strobe down to your helmet. The reason we did that is we had a special operations customer in Afghanistan. Their team literally called us on sat phone and asked us because they bought our cover and they were asking why or if we could do anything to help tie down the strobe because they had one of their operators chase a bad guy, a squirter underneath some cover and they were watching the ISR feed in the jock and he hit his head on a tree branch while he was shooting, exchanging fire back and forth with this bad guy that was running from the target and it knocked his strobe off and they thought he was hit and he was down. So they wanted to avoid that in the future. Um, plus they just wanted to make sure they don't lose mission essential gear. So they had us incorporate a strobe bungee. If you want to untie it, uh, take it off. You can, if you don't want to use it, you can definitely do that. If you want to mount your strobe so that your switch is on a facing front, then you can do that. And your actual strobe is facing backwards. You can do that and you can mount, you can pull this off and you can actually flip it around. So the hook is going the other way and it'll actually you can actually put your strobe on so that it's going the other, other direction if you want to take that off and do that. Or if you don't want to use it, you just take it off. But yeah, this is how this particular works. Because we get a lot of questions too. I'm like, a lot of people, a lot of our customers, will, especially if they're not from a military background and they're from a law enforcement background or uh, a civilian background, uh, they're like, what is this? What's this thing for? This bungee on top of the helmet, and this is what it's for.
Okay, keeps your, keeps your strobe secure and from getting knocked off your helmet. So we'll just continue to go down the line here, put our, replace all of our gear. This is the pouch. This is gonna get a redesign soon. So as soon as we get a redesign, we're gonna go ahead and release the new pouch with the new, with the new video and talk about the pouch. If you ordered one of these pouches from us and you have the little loops coming off of it, uh, basically what that is for is that is to loop your straps to help secure your patch to the helmet. You're gonna take those little bungees and you're going to loop your straps on the back of your cover th for, uh, through those elastic str straps. That guy fits on the back of the helmet right there. Okay, put our, man, our V lights on the back here. These come in really handy for a lot of things. These are basically like a battery operated chem light. Once again, SNS gear. Love the guys at SNS. Been doing stuff with them for a long time. Been friends with them a long time. So they they provided some gear in the past to me. These things, I think these they gave these to me in 2000. 13 or 14 and they still work. I probably should get some new ones because they don't, they, they have an on blink off. Now the reason these are on the back of the helmet here because they're like, hey Brian, you got a helmet light, you got a strobe on here, what do you need these V lights on the back? These V lights come in really handy if you're doing any type of nighttime jumping operations because you have to like, if you're doing any type of skydiving at nighttime or ju military jump operations at nighttime, guys usually like to mark themselves with green and red there's SOPs for that. I'm not going to get into that. But this also comes in really handy for me when I've taught uh, nighttime shooting classes to military or qualified civilians or law enforcement. And it's dark outside and you've got a bunch of people moving around and everybody's got nods on and you can't really tell who's who in the dark or who's who in the zoo. I run these, uh, I turn these on and then people can, if they flip their nods up, they can see the green coming off my helmet and they're like, oh, there's the, there's the instructor, there's Brian. Or... If they've got nods down and I turn around, they can see that I have V lights on and the constant on, and then they know that it's me and not another student. So if they want to approach me to ask questions or they just need to find me for whatever reason, the, uh, or to understand where the center line of the firing line is marked, because I usually stand right on the center of the firing line, they come in really handy for that. So that's why I have them on the back of this bump shell is for those two reasons right there. But as you can see, you can use the uh, handy dandy hook and loop on the back with the, with the hook on the um, holder for the V-Lite and then just run it up underneath this strapping right here. If you had bar tacked 550 cord, that'd be a really, really hard task to, to pull off right there. Go ahead and put Now, where this really shines is the cable management for the night vision. So if you're gonna run the pouch, you've got this, all this cabling going on. I'm gonna put this guy in the pouch. There we go, there's your power pack. And then where this really shines is the routing you can do where you can put it up and under. And it holds it out of the way, nice and secure. And you can just run this just like this for your power system. On the female side, you're gonna run this guy. You can run him up under here. Run him under here. And then, there we go, just like that. And then pull it down, get it routed properly. And then you've got. Good cable routing for your night vision. We can get our goggles up on here again. Actually, we can put these guys, hook these guys back down. There we go, bungees reinstalled. These things are old, I need a new pair of these. They don't even have the foam on them anymore because I've had them for so long and used the shit out of them. FF flags reinstalled. Get my SNS precision moto patch back on there. 
Night vision back on. And there you go. There's a fully kitted helmet with our cover on and how to put it on. If you got any questions, please hit us up either at uh, support at odgusa.co or info at loanelement.com or hit us in the DMs at loanelement underscore actual. Thanks and make sure you subscribe to our Patreon, click all the buttons, and we will see you soon. Peace.